me out for about two or three days now. A suppressing, heavy spirit. Do you know what I'm talking about? I came out of the hospital and I got in the car and I said, I said, Lord, I said, I said, I know why this is here. I said, I spent an awful lot of time in the dark world. I spent a lot of time reading about their world. And I'm going to tell you something right now, folks. There is absolutely nothing in that dark world for me. No, sir. Nothing. I said, Lord, I said, I do it. I'm doing it because I'm accountable and responsible as a pastor to teach because so many others won't teach anything. I said, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, but I don't like it. And it's beginning to take a toll on me. Lord, give me a break from it, I said. I said, I need peace. I need this power of the Holy Ghost back in my soul. I need to be able to feel the Holy Spirit. And I felt it lift. That's a wonderful thing. <laughs> I mean, I was just jumping around inside that truck, headed, toward, uh, headed back toward the house, and that, 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 that uh, heavy, 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 heavy thing was, uh, uh, was, was lifted. It was lifted off of, my, off my soul. And I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I didn't get, in it, I didn't get into that because I was curious. I got into it because it's ne necessary you wouldn't believe how many people, folks, how many people respond and say, Preacher, thank you. You're teaching on this. You've helped me so much. You're opening my eyes to what's going on in the world today. We need this kind of teaching. I understand that. But, folks, it takes a toll on you. And so I'm taking a break from it. This Sunday in Sunday school, I'm going off into something else now for a while. And I'm getting out of that. I've had enough of it. And uh, I, want to, I want to get back into the, into the things of God and the spiritual things and Christ and the Holy Ghost and the things that my life is associated with. It's my life. My life is the Holy Spirit. I'm born again. And there's a hunger in me for God, His Word, for the Holy Spirit to please Him, to live before Him, walk before Him, rejoice and shout because I'm saved, folks. I know the Lord. And, uh, so, uh, and, so, and, and so God lifted that, lifted that from me. The baptism of the Spirit, there's a lot of Pentecostal brethren out there, and they're brown brothers. I don't question that for a minute. A lot of those people out there love the Lord, uh, Church, of, Church of God, Assemblies of God, and other churches like that that are, that are Pentecostal. Uh, they believe that you have an extra work of grace after you get saved where you receive the Holy Spirit by what's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, there's an awful lot of good people that believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe it. Now, here's why. I have yet to hear what I believe by discerning from God. I have yet to hear from any of them what I believe is a real language. Number two, I do not believe that what happened on the day of Pentecost is to be repeated over and over and over and over and over and over again. But there was a baptism on Acts chapter number two. The Holy Spirit came down. He said, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And they did. <coughs> They did because before that they were hiding and quivering and shaking and hiding from the Jews and running. But after that, Acts chapter number 2, they stood up with boldness and said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he rose. And Peter put his hands on a dead one and she came back to life again. Miracles started flowing. Why? Because of the power of the Holy Ghost of God. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a real thing. Now let me give you this tonight. You need to think about it. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized in one body. Now there's an awful lot of brethren who say that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, I don't know, folks. I'm not so sure that I jump on that bandwagon. I believe the Lord Jesus Christ put you into the body of Christ. I believe he put you in the body of Christ with the power of the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God, folks, now this is important. The Holy Spirit of God is active in every single thing. As your relationship with God has to do with anything, if the Holy Ghost is not there, nothing's going to happen. Nothing. Can't happen. You can't be born again without the Spirit. You can't be convicted without the Spirit. No, no, nothing, nothing, nothing can happen that's, uh, that's of God without the Holy Ghost. See, so when you're born again, you are placed into the body of Christ. And how do you do that? You don't put yourself in there. And that water tub doesn't put you in the body of Christ. How does it happen, preacher? It's a spiritual thing. 
That baptism of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter number 2 was an event that took place 2,000 years ago that came with power. Power. They were literally immersed with the Holy Spirit of God. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And the church today sadly is lacking in that power and they don't even want it. They don't seek it. They feel like everything else can fill in the, fill in the, the, the need for it. But we need power. We need power. And that power has been given to us. And that power is our legacy. That power belongs to us. That Holy Spirit came in power. That's what that means. Like a cloven tongue of fire, he lit upon each one of them. And they began to speak the word of God. And if you look at Acts chapter number 2 very carefully, you know, <coughs> don't read into it what you want it to say. What does it say in Acts chapter number 2? In what? In their own language. And you go check it out and you've got 16 different uh, uh, groups of people there, 16, 16 different languages or dialects or whatever, but 16 different and every one of them heard in their own language the works of God, which of course shows the universal aspect of the gospel. It was there for everybody and it's there to be broadcast out for all to hear. So the baptism of the Spirit is a, it, it was, was what started the church. It's what empowered the church. The power came upon them. And, uh, and for someone to, to and, and a lot of good people, they come along and say, well, I received the baptism uh, after I was uh, saved. I went over to a church of God after I got saved. I hadn't been saved long. And my nature is I want to get to the bottom of everything. <laughs> Sometimes you get to the bottom, don't appreciate being at the bottom. <laughs> you don't appreciate where you get. But I wanted to find out. I wanted to find out. Now, my wife is a very practical person. She's far more practical than I am. I get my head up in the clouds sometimes. I see a much broader picture, you know. She looks at some of the details. <laughs> so we went to this church of God for a while. And we went in there and we sat down and I was, I was looking. I was I want, hungry. I wanted, I wanted to know something. And with the preacher would get up and preach. and preached a lot of good messages and I met a lot of sweet people in there on Sunday morning. Well, Sunday night we'd go back and, and, and the crowd wasn't quite as big. And then on Wednesday night, we went over there and there wasn't anybody in the auditorium. I thought, where are the people at? They said they're down in the basement. So we went down in the basement and there was just a handful down there. Now, this is over 40 years ago, folks. There's just a handful down there. And uh, I thought, this is odd, but I didn't say anything. <laughs> but my wife did. <laughs> She's very practical. She said, if these people have something that we're supposed to have, where are they on Wednesday night? If they've got such power with the baptism of the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in tongues, how come they're not here on Wednesday night? We are. I couldn't answer her. That's a very practical statement, right? Right? Well, you know, I don't think they say that anymore. I haven't heard it in a long time, but here's what they taught. Here's what I heard right after I got saved. Uh, I, I witnessed to everybody and told them I'd been born again, and they said, hallelujah to God. They said, that's a good thing. And this woman, especially her family, I used to work as a mechanic, had a shop over there on, on, on Oak Ridge Highway and had a Volkswagen shop and, and I was going here and going there, going everywhere. She said, come over and visit our church. So I came over and visited with her church and she was a church of God. Good girl, good girl, no doubt about it. Had a good family and uh, we went over there and visited with them and, uh, and, and, and heard the preaching and all that. Uh, and the, here's what they told me. They said, now, you've been saved. And they didn't doubt that. She said, but now you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. She said, she says, you need that because you need that power to live a Christian life. That's what she told me. And she was as sincere as she could be about it, folks. She meant what she said. She meant what she said. That's what she told me. You need that power to live a Christian life. Have any of you heard anything like that in the last 10 or 15 years? Do you hear it? You've heard it? My brother is a church Pentecostal, and they tell me all the time that we need sanctification and the grace of the Holy Ghost to speak in tongues because that's what brings it. That would make the Holy Ghost, that would make tongues a precursor to Holy Ghost. That's not what the Bible says. Well, of course. Do, 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 do they believe you have the Holy Spirit now or you don't have the Holy Ghost? They don't believe you. They don't believe you have the Holy Spirit. They believe because you don't speak in tongues. Exactly. And they, 
they wear you out with it. Okay. Okay. All right. Now you are you are two born again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, but you don't have the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm talking about. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm saying according to them. I'm not saying. I believe that. <laughs> That's not what I believe at all, but I'm saying that's what they say. Yeah, yeah, and every time you get around them, they start wearing you out with it. And, and, And that's coming from a woman telling you this right here tonight, folks. <laughs> right, because most of them are many, and they are. Out of fact, is I don't know if I've ever met one that says they have the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues that believes in eternal security. Of course, they, yes, they're Arminian. Jacob Arminius taught that. He taught you could lose your salvation. Well, the Bible says in Ephesians to grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are what? You're sealed to the day of redemption, right? And the Bible says the Holy Spirit of God is the earnest of our inheritance, right? Now, how many Holy Spirits are there? One. Just one, right? One. One. So what they're trying to do is to tell you that you can be saved but not have the Holy Spirit. How did you get saved to begin with then? See, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, how did you get saved to begin with? You can't be saved without the Holy Ghost. That's impossible. And this is what he talks about in John 3. He said in John chapter number 3, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And then he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Then that which is born of the what? All right. What spirit? Holy Spirit. And if you notice in John chapter number 3, he said, you, he said uh, let's go over here and read it. Instead of just talking about it, look at it in John chapter number 3, verse 5. Now watch this carefully. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say to thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 6. Now watch the contrast. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. What does spirit answer to in verse 5? Spirit. What does flesh answer to in verse 5? Verse, verse 6, what does flesh in 6 answer to in verse 5? Water. And of course, if you know anything about biology, you know that there's water associated with physical birth. So why would, you, why would they say that? They say that because there may be, going, may be more going on on this earth than we give credit for. That's why. There may be some stuff out here that just uh, boggles the mind. And then somebody said, well, I lost, and that's when you go off in the deep end. <laughs> See, that's when you go out, you get out here in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the peripheral when you start talking about something other than a human being. Well, in Genesis chapter number 6, folks, the sons of God saw the daughters of men, right? A lot of common interpretation for that is that the sons of God were the sons of Seth. All right, and so what happened here was the, was the, was the adulteration of the line of Seth. All right, where do the giants come from? Well, that's a metaphor for great men. No, it's not a metaphor. Giant, from the, Greek, from the Hebrew word Nephilim, which means fallen ones. Where do they come from? They come from the union of the angels that kept not their first estate, Peter talks about. They came into strange flesh, he talks about. And because of that, we have giants in the earth, and we still do. We still do. There's a lot of stuff out there that doesn't necessarily fit the human model. So what's going on here is that if a human being born, a human being that is born of flesh, 
that human being can be saved. But that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So if you are born of the Spirit, what does that mean? That means that you are born of the Spirit of God, folks. If you're born of the Spirit of God, then you are sealed by that Holy Spirit. And that is the Holy Spirit is the earnest of your inheritance. And for you to say, well, no, wait a minute, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Do you know where people get this? They get it from the book of Acts. Look over here in Acts. I think it's 19. I have to, I'm not sure. Priscilla and Aquila deal with Apollos. I believe it's 19. Yes. Acts 19, verse 1. And it came to pass while Apollos was at Corinth. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said to them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? All right, there's your question. There it is. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? That's what it says in Acts 19. Okay. Now, if I came up to someone who has heard the gospel of Christ, heard the preaching of the simple preaching of the gospel of Christ, the finished work of Christ, the blood atonement, how he died for you on the cross, was buried and rose again the third day, 1 Corinthians 15, that's the gospel. And I said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Would I be out of sync with what's going on today? What does it say that follows? What does the scripture say in that context? <coughs> Look at it very carefully. This is so very important. They said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Now then watch carefully. And he said to them, Under what then were you baptized? And they said, Under what? John's baptism. Were the people Christians that got baptized under John's baptism? No. I'll answer that real fast for you. No. Were they saved? Yes. If they weren't saved, what's the point in John baptizing? If he was sent from God and all men born of woman hath not risen are greater than John, that's a total contradiction. John the Baptist was fulfilling his destiny. He was doing exactly what he was supposed to be doing. He was calling the nation of Israel to repentance to prepare the way of the king. Absolutely. And if a man was baptized at the baptism of John and he repented of, of his sins, if he died before he ever heard the gospel of Christ, he went to heaven. No question about that. None whatsoever. But when you get to the 19th chapter of the, of the book of Acts, you have already passed a long way past the preaching of John the Baptist. You've already got the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You've got the clear presentation of the gospel. But remember, remember this. The first book that was ever written in the New Testament is not the book of Acts. It's not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The first book written in the New Testament, and you can't prove this one way or another, but it was more than likely written by the Apostle Paul, and it was 1 Thessalonians. Say, so why do you say that? Go back in the book of Acts and find, go way back, and who gets saved in Acts chapter number 9? And Saul, breathing out threatenings and slaughter, went to the priest to receive letters to the church or to the, to the synagogue in, 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 in Damascus that if he found any of that way, he might bring them bound back to Jerusalem to stand trial because of their heresy. All right? That's early, 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 folks. Early in the New Testament church that God saves the Apostle Paul. And when he saved him, he took him out into Arabia. He took him away from people. See? He took him away from the church in Jerusalem, from Peter, James, and John. He took him away from, from the Judaizers. He took him, away, took him away from the Jewish unbelievers. He took him away from everybody. He took him out into Arabia, and there he began to reveal the great truths of the nature of the body of Christ, the mysteries of the body of Christ, the mystery of the rapture, these mysteries were revealed to the Apostle Paul. And this was done because the Jew had rejected Christ and rejected the kingdom, and now God wanted his man to carry the gospel to the Gentiles. 
Is that what he said to Ananias? Did he not tell Ananias that he will carry my name and he said he will suffer many things for my name's sake? Yes, he did. If the chronology, if you get the chronology of the New Testament right, it will fall into place. Now go back and look at Acts chapter number 19. They haven't even heard of the Holy Ghost. Well, they sure hadn't heard Peter preach then. They hadn't heard Paul preach because they were preaching it. They hadn't heard Philip preach. He said, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart, why do you resist the Holy Ghost? See? All they had heard was the preaching of John the Baptist. And remember now, I'm not putting John down. I'm telling you that John came before Christ. And this message was back in the past. And now more revelation had come out and more was understood. And the cross had happened and the blood atonement now was ratified, sealed by the death of Christ on the cross, and the new covenant had come into effect. And Hebrews 9 says, without the death of the testator, the testament is not in force. And when Christ died on the cross, he brought that testament into force, ratified it. It became legal. It became binding. But until that happened, it wasn't necessary for them to hear that. All they had to hear was the gospel, was the preaching gospel in the sense that John the Baptist preached it. Gospel means good news. So here said now. Then said Paul, verse 4, <coughs> John verily baptized the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him that is on Christ. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is where the apostolics come in now. How many ever heard of the Apostolic Church? A lot of good people in the Apostolic Church. I know some of the pastors here in town. We, we talk every time we see each other. The Apostolic, what does the Apostolic Church believe? They believe that Jesus Christ is it. That there is no Father and there is no Holy Spirit. That these are simply offices. All right? They call them Jesus only. They call them Jesus only. And they have a real problem with what we call the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They say that that is a doctrine that the Roman Catholic Church introduced to the church centuries ago and that the early believers didn't know anything about a Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is not a lesson on the Trinity tonight, folks, but I'm going to tell you something right now. There is no way in this world that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. In Hebrews chapter number 5, the Bible said that uh, Christ was crying and praying unto the Father, and he was heard and that he was able to save him from death. That's no office. That's God the Father saving his son out of the clutches of, of what he went into who became sin for us, who knew no sin. That's the Father saving him out of that. And that's what he did. No, the Father and the Son are two distinct, entirely distinct, different uh, personages. No man knows the Son but the Father. No man knows the Father but the Son. And no man can come to, the, to come to the Son except the Father which has sent him draw them. That's not an office, folks. But anyway, the Jesus-only people, the, and these are branch of the Pentecostal church, believe that you are not to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. They need, believe that you are to be to baptized in the name of Jesus. And that's it. And here's what they, they make a big play on this word. The word name. Is that a singular or plural? That's singular. All right. All right. They say that the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost is Jesus. See, that's how they, they, that's how they, that's how they deal with that word baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So over here in Acts chapter number 19, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, do you believe that if you were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, that that would keep you out of heaven? Do you believe if you were baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, that that would keep you out of heaven? Let me tell you what keeps you out of heaven. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. 1 John chapter number 5. That's what will keep you out of heaven. 
How do you have the Son? You have the Son by saving faith. Saving faith is nowhere to be conjured up inside you. You don't have it. You don't have it. You can't find it. You can't buy it. You can't work for it. You can't produce it. Where does it come from? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The Holy Ghost takes the Word that He inspired, and He writes it into your heart and into your soul, and burns conviction. John chapter number 16, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. He'll testify of Me. He will bring the world into conviction. And this is so important. A young man came to church here a few weeks ago. He came down to the front right here. I think he was 30, 32, 33 years old. He said, Preacher Lawson, I just want to tell you something. He said, I, I got saved not too long ago, and I want to give you my testimony. Usually when they say that, they got a testimony. He said, I was a worship leader in a big mega church, huge mega church. He said, I was a worship leader up on the stage in front of the people day after day after day. He said, I was a worship leader, right smack in the middle of it, of a huge mega church. And he said, the Holy Ghost convicted me and I got saved. He said, I had to get out of there. I didn't tell him to say that. That's what he told me. He said, he saved me. And he said, the spirit that came inside me was so foreign to what I was in the midst of, I had to leave. All right. That's the Spirit guiding you into all truth. Now, how do you know you'd believe in the right Christ? 2 Thessalonians 2 says, There is another Spirit, another Christ, another gospel, all of these other things. You're living in the day of deception. Well, I believe everything I'm supposed to believe about Jesus. That's not salvation. Salvation is not believing about Jesus. Salvation is Jesus. Salvation is a person. Now here's how you know, the Holy Ghost, if you listen to him, he'll show you the real Jesus. He will make a clear distinction between the true Christ and the false Christ. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. When he has come, he will convince the world of sin. You remember what the Bible says, I saw the Spirit descending upon him. Do you remember when the Spirit descended upon him, there was a voice from heaven that said, this this is my beloved son. That spirit, that dove, was a type, a picture of the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost is the one who said, that's my son. See, it's the Holy Spirit identifying the true Christ. Christos means anointed one. Messiah, Messiah, is anointed one. And Satan is the anointed cherub that covereth. And Satan's a liar and a deceiver, and he's another Christ. Another Christ, another Jesus, and another gospel, and another spirit. And I'm afraid that so many churches are full of the wrong spirit, and the wrong Christ, and the wrong gospel. Well, then, Preacher Lawson, what makes you think you've got the true Christ? First of all, he brought me out of hell. Secondly, he put something inside me that wasn't in there before. Thirdly, he put a desire in me to read this book, this book. And when I began reading that book, it started talking to me. Then I noticed how my life started cleaning up. I noticed how that I didn't love the things I loved before and the things that I didn't love before I started loving. I had a desire to go to church. I couldn't get enough of the Word of God. I couldn't get enough preaching. I wanted fellowship with God's people. I would go throughout the day and things would come to my mind and my soul about I never thought about before in my life, about spiritual things, eternal things, holy things that became part of my life. And then the name of the Lord Jesus Christ gave me goosebumps. I used to think about him dying on the cross and how he suffered for my sins. And I used to think to myself, he must have loved me so much to pay a sin debt for a sorry low down dog like me. And he died on that cross. And that cross that the Apostle Paul preached about, I rejoiced in. The cross that John the Baptist, the, 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 the Christ that John the Baptist preached about, I rejoiced in. The, 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 the gospel that this New Testament preaches to us, I rejoiced in all that. And the reason I did is because a spirit had moved inside me that wasn't in me before. And then I go to the church house. And I've been in church houses where they think the only reason they've got to exist is to feed the poor, to clothe the people, to take care of social problems, 
to heal the wounds of the world, to lift up some kind of a social banner. And all of these things are good in their place, but their place is far from first place. The reason we're here tonight is to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. And it didn't take me long to find out that some of those people I was standing next to at Third Creek Baptist Church, and this is nothing against Third Creek. They had a lot of good people down there, a lot of good people. But they had people down there that was just as dead in sin as they could be dead. They didn't a bit more know Christ, yet they were some of the leaders in that church. Didn't take me long to find out some of them did not have the Holy Spirit to witness. The Spirit witnessed with my spirit. Now, how in the world can somebody come up and say, Preacher Lawson, you don't have the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. No, my dear friend, if I didn't have the Holy Spirit of God, I wouldn't be here tonight with you. He's brought me so far, showed me so much, changed my life. He has taken so much out of my life and put so much into my life that all I can do from this day on is shout and glorify his holy name. Praise him forever. Yes, sir. That's the new birth. That's the new birth. That's the new birth. Nobody has to tell me what it is. I appreciate your testimony. I appreciate you know the Lord. I appreciate how you got saved. But I'm a stubborn devil. I am a skeptic to the bone. And God's got to shake me to my very core to get the message over. And did he ever shake me? I don't know what, how you felt under conviction, but I know how I felt. I know how I felt. <laughs> I felt like I could take a step and drop straight into hell fire and burn. I was that close. I dreaded, I dreaded every moment of my life. I thought, I'm going to hell. And I had never thought about that before. But it came on me. I was going to hell. And I bowed my head and said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive me and save me from my sins. And I raised my head back up and hell was gone. <laughs> and light flooded my soul. Peace and joy and I rejoiced. Now that's what happened to me. <laughs> I hope that's what happened to you. And, and some folks have a, a more dramatic experience in salvation. And, uh, but it's everyone's individual. And you've got your experience and God bless you for it. But the main thing is you know that you know that you know that you've passed from death into life. Amen. There's nothing like that, folks. There's nothing greater than that. I'll be 70 years old in just a few days. It gets better by the day. <laughs> Especially after I got that thing off me this morning. <laughs> I've been walking around. I've been walking lighter all day long. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't, folks, do you understand what a dark hole that is? Do you understand the stuff I've been getting into, the stuff I've been talking about? All this, all this, all this satanic garbage, that's a dark, deep pit. And there are people in that stuff right now, and they they live it. That's their life. That's what they hunger for, and they think they're Christians. I don't hunger for that garbage. I want light. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sing about Jesus to me. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, we'll pick it up again next week. Tonight we talked about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Next week we'll talk about the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Get back in that again next week. Father, I pray that you bless the Word of God. And Father, I pray about this booth back here, Lord. And Father, it may not be, it may not be the devil. It may just simply be equipment. It may be some malfunction tonight. I don't know, Lord. I, I'm not jump, jump up, find a demon under every rock. But if it is, Lord, if it is the devil, if it is a demon, if it is a spiritual thing, I plead the blood of Christ against it tonight. I plead the blood of Christ against this thing, whatever it is that's coming against our internet ministry. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. Has it started working yet? It did. Hallelujah. Somebody prayed then. It was dead when I came in tonight. Picked up, started working. Good. Yes, ma'am. Well, hallelujah. Did you hear that? Yes, 
Oh, she's already passed away? I went to see her yesterday and prayed with her. Okay. Okay. Well, I didn't know that. All right. We pray for that family. I mean, I went in there and prayed with her and talked with her. Well, you don't know. I mean, that's in the hands of God when, when we leave out of this world. So please pray for the family there. Yes, ma'am. They do. Well, we're glad to take them in. Yes, sir. I talked to them the other day. Y'all come on down here at the front. You already got everything done? Good. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right. We talked to these ladies the other day. And they, uh, Rebecca Ralph and Lorraine K. Ralph. They're coming to uh, Desire Church membership by statement, been born again, been baptized. Y'all got anything you want to say to the congregation? My goodness. You got a lot of folks from the West coming in here. Amen. Albuquerque, New Mexico. All right. Do you, ha do you have anything you want to say, sister? That's all right. You don't have to talk. All right. They, you've, heard the, you've heard the request of these ladies right here. I want to join us tonight. Do you have a motion we accept them? Motion set, made, seconded. Those in favor, show the lift in the right hand. Amen. Looks to me like it's unanimous. Well, then here in a minute when we get through praying, we want you to come by and shake hands with them. Give them the right hand church fellowship. If you all sit back down for a minute, then we'll come back up and, and, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll, sh we'll shake hands with you. Go ahead and finish our prayer request tonight. All right. So pray for Karen Branfast's family, folks. Pray. There's no doubt in my mind that Karen Branfast knew the Lord. She loved the Lord. She was a precious lady. Certainly was, no question about that. And no doubt in my mind where she is now. She's absent from the body and she's present with the Lord. Amen. Amen. So please remember that family in prayer. Yes, sir. Who did? His mother in law? Okay. 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 All right. Just remember that request. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Boy, let's pray for her. Little, the little 18 month old has a cyst on her ovary. They'd pray for this little one named Bella. Yes. All right, 26th through the 28th, C.T. Townsend at Valley View for a youth conference. Amen. So pray about that and uh, about the meeting over there with them. All right, he's a fine preacher, folks. Yes, sir. Amen, amen. God bless you, brother. He's going back to Santa Clara, California, I think you said. Amen. Somebody over here. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Okay. What what did you, what did she say about the esophagus? Yeah, I know. Okay. Good. When they did the CT scan or what it was, they found that it was all localized, hadn't spread, 
And so they got in there. Apparently, they got all of it then. That's good. All right. All right. Anybody else? Steve? Seven-year-old cancer. Yes, sir. Amen. All right. Yes, ma'am. Well, Dean McNeese is a fine preacher. I mean, he's a fine man. Now, is this right off Beaumont? I think I know now where it is. Uh huh. Right. Off Central. Where the old Sears used to be? Okay. That's not where I'm thinking then. Okay. Okay. They come together down there like this. They cross Broadway and Central does. Okay. Okay. You're talking about that big cemetery over there? All right, I know what you're talking about now. There's a church in there, yeah. Okay. Right. So you folks know where he's talking about over there. That's a, that's a huge cemetery in there. That cemetery has got uh, Civil War uh, graves in there, soldiers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you heard that. Uh, uh, what's... North side on Bernard Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best way to find it is to go out Central, Central Avenue Pike, like you're going to town, and you turn right to go over there. If I'm thinking right, to go to that church, and uh, it's right past where the old, do you know where the old, you're not from here, though. You wouldn't know where the old Sears was. Uh, That's it. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. I saw Brother Barry Dunham yesterday, and he said Sister Kim had been had some problems, and uh, she indicated, she said, generally, you know, she feels she's pretty strong. And he, he was both of them. Totally on both of them. It's, uh, it's a war of attrition. There's no end to it. Unless God heals her, bless her heart, she'll have a battle with this the rest of the time she's in this world. She needs your prayers and support. 
Shannon McDonald. Please pray for her because she has to, it's just uh, sometimes she's a little better, but then it goes right back into it again. And I have no idea what it is to fight that kind of battle, but please pray for her. Yes, sir. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yes, sir, brother. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Good, good. Yes, ma'am. All right. All right. Yes, ma'am. Remember that request. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Anybody else before we pray? Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Anybody else got an unspoken request? All right. Then let's pray. Let's go. To, let's go to the Lord in prayer, brother. Ed Williams, lead us in prayer tonight, please. Have these ladies come up to the front here. We're going to come by and shake hands with them. Give them the right hand church fellowship. Tickled to death to have them become part of this ministry. Just come here, come by here before you leave out of this house and, 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 and pray for them. Amen. Remember Karen Brandfast family, folks.